All right. All we need is a high energy <clears throat> start. That's the one thing I didn't think about. Do you have a high well, energy I, I, start? Dude, we we didn't think about the first couple. <laughs> Let's just get after it. This is a fun episode. This is That's true. this is a no this is no adrenaline episode. This is a, we can just run through these and have some fun with it. Conceived in quarantine and born into a world we never would have imagined. A podcast featuring two friends, outrageous facts and a countdown clock that always wins. This is 26 and 26, the A to Z of everything. Brandon, we've officially started. How are you doing tonight? Man, I am doing so good. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. Uh, it rained today, and that just always makes me A happy. couple times. It rained a couple times. It did, and I chased a lot of those storms. So is that right? I'm you got your there. storm tracer on? Oh, yeah. I Well, I've got to get my money's worth. I bought a lightning tracker for my, for my camera, and uh, I bought it, and then we had two weeks of no lightning, and God damn dang it the timing was just perfect <laughs> <laughs> well definitely been no shortage of lightning recently so i'm hoping you're no. getting your dollars worth i i am finally i am finally that was uh, those kind of a toss to a highlight so we'll just go ahead and do it brandon what's what's your highlight for this episode we're just trucking right into it i have no doubt that my highlight i'm still buzzing from our last episode where we finished the letters got all oh, the yeah. way through 26 in 26 the namesake made real so stoked on that i'm still crying foul on zary and uh no, no, you know no. <laughs> No, it's it's yeah, it's all good. I, it's in I, the books. I, I I will give you. Aside from taking some liberties on the on the the naming structure, you hit it. You <laughs> did hit it. There were twenty six facts, and and I did enjoy delivered in twenty six minutes. So oh yeah, no, we crushed it. We crushed it. What what uh what are we doing today? We're gonna mix things up a little bit. Um, definitely had some people talk to us who were but uh, bitter, but hurt, completely <laughs> upset that there were. Where are these extra letters? Where are the missing letters? I was well, going to say, they're not Don't worry, extra. folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, <laughs> folks. We got your letters right here. We're going to be taking care of all the missing letters throughout the season and delivering them to you in this episode. Um, Nathaniel, why don't you break down the specifics? All right. So we're not going to do a timed episode because there's just a lot of let we we missed a lot of letters especially in the beginning <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> yeah especially in the beginning so uh i've got a list of our last letters uh you've got all of your facts prepared in front of you i've got my one list of facts, facts. for my one episode yeah facts we use that term loosely here folks <laughs> oh um, it's very loose <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're going to go through and we're going to hit the remaining letters from every episode one through nine. Can't do 10 because why, got why, why can't all, we do 10? What, what, why, got, what makes 10 different? You, you got all of them on 10 for, for, once, for once. I believe, I believe in baseball terms, you're batting 100. How is that? <laughs> Let's not put it in baseball terms. <laughs> Let's put it all in right. golf terms and say, you know. That's the, the low numbers, what you're looking for there. That's that's what you're doing. Well, we do have one other housekeeping announcement. Uh, ah, yes. This is going to be the end of season one, and we are going to take a brief hiatus from recording. Um, Brandon, I don't know if you know this, but you're having a kid. Um, Wait, who told you that? I think you did a couple months ago. Actually, I think you told us in the very first episode. I know, I know work's been busy, so you may have forgotten. <laughs> oh boy, that is coming up, isn't it? Oh, that, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> as, as the world around us is ramping up, uh, as both of our schedules are taking off, and as you have a uh, addition to your family coming up, we're going to take a break and uh, – not let this dominate our lives because we want this to be something that we enjoy and others enjoy with us. So sure. uh, please follow us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram at 26 in 26 a two Z, or you can follow us on Facebook. That's 26 in 26, the A to Z of everything. We're going to try and get content up during the hiatus, but we will absolutely will keep everybody posted on when we come back for season two. We've already got ideas and we're already a little bummed that we're going to have to wait as long as we do in order to Certainly. take these ideas to fruition. But what we don't have to wait for any longer is the start of this episode. Brandon, are you ready? I am ready. Are you ready? I 
I am. I'd say you have a clock, but you don't have a clock because <laughs> we have a long list instead. Starting with episode one, Birds. Let's do this. I like this. I don't have the pressure of that clock staring me down right now. I'm feeling pretty good that we're just going to knock everything out. We're going to deliver the facts in a timely manner still, but it's going to be fun. You have the we're pressure have of right my now. bedtime still. I need to get to bed at a decent hour. All right. That's fair enough. All right, cool. Let's then let's get right to it. <laughs> Nathaniel, we we're going to start with um, episode one, Birds, going all the way back to numero uno. What was the last letter we got in Birds? Last letter was S for skeleton. Skeleton. That's right. Skeleton. And um, just help me out here. What was the bonus letter that we had for uh, that episode? Pity fact was T. Also, fun fact, listeners, we're not going to tell you any of these previous letters. You got to go back and listen to them. They're amazing episode episodes. One. We're proud of them. So go back, find out what a skeleton is and what T is. But Brandon, what is you? You starting is UV rays. No other living bird, no other living anything um, has birds like a feather. Feathers like a bird, maybe is better said. <laughs> Off to a great start. The main function is to help them fly, but also waterproof the birds and protect them from UV rays and other harmful elements for you. So V, video right. game. The Ooh. game Angry Birds has oh, sold more than 7 million copies on Apple's iPhone app. Um, the game was made by a team of just four people, and it has such a low priority for the company that it took over eight months to finish. However, it went on to be one of the most successful video game franchises. I mean, it's got movies. It's got – think of all the clothing and stuff. Have you ever played Angry Birds? Oh, yeah. Just I, – I remember Bathroom Breaks back in 2013. <laughs> is it really I, I guess i should have looked up the year but it's that old isn't it was it i mean i i know i was playing it back when you and i were working together at the hotel so like it, it's been around for a while god are, are you are you are you looking it up right now <laughs> <laughs> no no not at all oh. <laughs> <laughs> i don't care about facts <laughs> are you kidding me the details no i'm not trying to get into all that ah, um uh, but actually i was i was a little surprised when you said video game i was kind of expecting duck hunt Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. That was actually yeah. one of my all-time yeah. favorites, playing uh -huh. that on Nintendo. Did oh, yeah. you, I had the gun, which well, I guess that, you needed. Did you need I, the gun? I, was, I don't think you could play Dog Hunt without the gun. Okay, well, then it wasn't that big a special thing, but I felt very special <laughs> having the gun. I also had the glove. The glove was insane, but it did nothing. Yeah, you had to put like a, an X and Y pattern, like bars on your TV, what? and then you could actually have your hand move right and left. It was like from the movie. There was some yeah. video okay. gaming movie where he got the glove, and it was huh. everything. And then huh. I got the glove, and I was like, well, it's going to be exactly like the movie. <laughs> it was nothing like the movie. The gun, it was random, oh. and it was basically just a controller on your wrist. Because you ended up playing the game oh. in just a very awkward fashion. <laughs> no good. Oh, Moving along, because nobody wants to hear about my glove fashion. W for woodpeckers hoard acorns. Acorn huh. woodpeckers store acorns by drilling holes in trees, fence posts, utility poles, buildings, and depositing their nuts there. Um, <laughs> they've been known to store up to 50,000 acorns. All in <laughs> one, um, uh, only in a, a tiny hole, one by one. Um the like woodpecker one can, bird? can do 50,000 acorns. Here's how they do it. Woodpeckers can peck 20 times in a second. Just mining out little holes. That is... Good grief. That is... I don't know. I don't even know what calculation I was trying to do there. That's just a lot of <laughs> repetitions a second. My favorite fact about woodpeckers, you know how they're able to do that 20 times a second without like mm. destroying their brain? Their tongue, their tongue is so long that it actually coils around their brain and is basically a little shock absorber. And then they slam their head against whatever wood source they're chipping away at and their tongue keeps their brain in place. Bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Moving on. X for Exolmus dominicanus. This black and white montilla is a species of birds in the Tyrinidae family. It's okay. found in Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, and possibly Paraguay. I love how it's possibly Paraguay. Like maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Um, again, I did not look up these facts. I just copy and paste them and relay them on to you. 
its natural habitats are so subtropical or tropic dry, lowland grass, subtropical or tropical seasonally wet. A lot of information, which really doesn't pertain to me having a better understanding of where the bird is, but this species is sometimes separated um, from its montipic genus Herextomatis. Um, I don't even know really what that means, but you find <laughs> a fact for birds that starts with the letter X. And we're going to see a little bit of a theme here in these I mean, XYZ I facts that they are all stretches. I applaud you for like, the, no, it started with an X. That's That started with an X. Zary, not a word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, you got to take some liberties where you can. Um, why for yawning birds? Um, budgergaries or budgies um, are a common parakeet, only uh, bird species so far discovered who are susceptible to contagious yawning. While humans, dogs, chimps, lab rats even, um, and a few other creatures have all been known to catch each other's yawns, budgies are the first non-mammal species observed ex exhibiting this behavior. Many scientists believe that the unconscious instinctual response may be a primitive way of showing empathy, or it might be a sign of group alertness. But either way, the only known birds to catch a yawn. Budgies. Huh. Budgies. I love parakeets. Parakeets yeah. are fast. I just love birds in general. This did you ever a own a bird? I did. I did. Had a parakeet named Wazoo, which is French for bird. We went all out in the naming. <laughs> yeah, you really, you really <laughs> dipped into that uh, creativity. No, I, I, I could never have a bird. I think in Cuban culture, it's really like they, they don't encourage bringing things from the outdoors indoors. Yeah fish birds whatever it might be it's keep them outside yeah and, and if i were to if i were to have a bird as a pet again it would it would be a rescue like it would be a bird that has already been in that situation and right 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 just neat but they're fas fascinating creatures i really did enjoy this episode there was there was a lot of fun stuff uh, yeah, Z. I know how much you like it when I take liberties on letters. You're going <laughs> to love this next one. We're doing Z for zebras in our oh. bird episode, which is obviously not a bird, but the adorable oxpecker perched on the back of a rhinoceros, a zebra, happily having lunch while riding uh, on its um, or eating the pesky ticks, flies and other bugs that eat off of the zebra that live on the zebra huh. so those not so fast ox peckers are washing down bugs with a healthy helping of blood and that ah. is pretty good and what's funny is my other fact for z was zazu um yes. which is oh yeah you know obviously <laughs> The most famous bird in the world, the iconic Lion King uh, character, um, he was a red bill, a red billed hornbill. Red and he's billed the hornbill. wise mentor to Mufasa. So that was my other fact, another bonus fact. Bonus fact in this after dark episode. So that concludes that the missing birds. letters from birds. Easy All right. peasy. All right, leave us alone. There they are. Done. <laughs> Done. Stop <laughs> asking. So, um, all right. So we're moving on to episode two now, which is camp camping. Uh -huh. Nathaniel, where do we leave off? Uh, T for temperature. Uh, although your pity fact was you, uh, the largest user of uh, tents. Okay. So we've got to bring V through Z. Yes. All right, let's start with V. Uh, in 2016, 40 million Americans went camping for vacation, and it's growing. There was a 64% increase in the number of Americans going camping in 2018. I know we talked about it in that episode, but we are both huge advocates of camping. If you've oh. never been, find someone who has, um, go, or just go to one of those like you know predetermined campsites where they've got a little ranger there. They make it super easy. They got bathroom showers and all that. It's kind of like your 101 camp. Oh, yeah. and then evolve into that backwoods off oh, the grid yeah. you know that's the good stuff right there see and all those practice stars practice leave no trace if you can haul it in you better be able to haul it out yes Advoc advocates of responsible outdoor recreation <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a nightmare. When I, I'm oh. a former smoker, and when I see cigarette butts out there, I'm just like, you couldn't throw that in the fire. You couldn't just, you know, come on. Yeah, or beer cans everywhere, broken glass. Like you I hauled take in this. a full beer can, you can't yeah. haul out an empty. 
Yeah, or I, the on. worst is when it's broken glass. I take the dog camping. I want him to be able to roam around, and suddenly I got to worry about broken glass. I, this is why we can't have nice things, but we can <laughs> have the letter W. Transition. For wagon train. The founder of the modern recreational camping was Thomas Hurram Holding, who wrote the first edition of the Camper's Handbook in 1908. His urge to camp was born from his experiences as a boy. In 1853, he crossed the prairies of the United States in a wagon train covering some 1,200 miles with a company of 300 people. Now, 1,200 miles, you might say, okay, that's two days, two long days, three days drive. Mm. He did it in a wagon in 1853. Mm. If you've ever played mm -hmm. Oregon Trail, oh, yeah. you know how tough a time he had. <laughs> I've how many people do you know? Uh, yeah, how many people did he know that died of dysentery? <laughs> you know, it's more than one. If the if, if Oregon Trail says anything about it, yeah, it was way he, more than one. Somebody died of dysentery. Exactly. How long did it take him? Did you say? Or do you know? You don't. No, it didn't cover it. I had no oh, okay. idea. But okay. he did it with a company of 300 people, covered 1,200 miles. Ugh. But that must have been his lifetime. Months. I mean, 1,200 miles months. in 1853. That's, that's not a lifetime. That's months. Oh, it was probably three years. <laughs> I don't I know. know. All well, right. you got to think they're doing 20 miles a day tops. Huh, yeah. In a yeah. wagon. True. You know what it's like to, I mean, yeah. pull a wagon of 300 oh, yeah. people. Well, I it's mean, not much more than people that. people in one, in one wagon. Yeah, I mean, just the time <laughs> alone. I mean, driving to California, 400 miles. Phoenix to LA, 400 miles. And it takes six or seven hours. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they were doing 20, 30 miles a day max. I've had enough homework assignments from previous episodes. I'll look this one up, too. X for expensive. <laughs> on average, Americans spend eighty to one hundred and forty dollars on each camping trip, but it certainly can be done for a lot, lot less, or a lot, lot more. Um, that's all depending on you and what your level of comfort needs to be. Why? For you don't say. Doritos <laughs> are a surprisingly good fire starter, which is super scary considering that it's probably all the chemicals that are in them. Just place some chips under your kindling, light the <laughs> chips, and burn, baby, burn. It's a. I've tested this one. Doritos are ultra flammable. Oh, dude, Cool Ranch fire starters is what I call them. <laughs> cool Ranch fire starters. That's nice. I like that. Z for zeal. Um, we started in this episode with attitude, and we we're going to end with Ooh. zeal. Ooh. Zeal is a noun meaning great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an object. If your zeal for camping is good, so will your trip. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that is everything. Actually, so we so we did the camping episode, and then somewhere. In this list of episodes that we release, I went camping uh, in California. I talked about it in one of the episodes, and absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent, it's it is all about the attitude that you take in. We hiked so much, but it was so so much fun. Oh. Nathaniel, we just covered Z, and this uh -oh. next episode uh -oh. is derby for roller uh -oh. derby. Uh -oh. This was your episode, buddy. So you're gonna need to fill in the blanks here. Um, right. Where did you leave off in derby? Uh, I left off on the letter T uh, for oh, okay. Texas, uh, which means I also have U through Z. Um, I'm also regretting giving you as much crap about um, letters as I did in later episodes as I look back mm -hmm. at, uh, mm -hmm. at my script. And um, uh -huh. we're just going to buckle up for this. So U is yep. uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. It does start with the U. Um, I'm going to count the ones that I can count. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. Let's get so, creative so, with it. That's not bad. So, That's easy. Uh, Derby is actually really cool in the fact that uh, it's portrayed in media as just this super violent sport and just knocking people out left and right. And it is uh, very uh, safety conscious, actually, because you have individuals skating around at a high speed. Um, and if you're playing bank track, they can be, you know, very high off of the ground. Uh, so block in the back. Uh, you can actually receive enough penalties. Uh, and especially if you receive enough unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, you can be ejected from the game. Uh, v, the Victorian Roller Derby League. It was founded in 2007, and it was added to the International Derby League in 2011. They were the first Australian member to the International League, and they were also the first member from the Southern Hemisphere 
Um, and this is actually a really fun coincidence. I wasn't planning on this. Another uh, Southern Hemisphere team uh, that I'm a huge fan of, and I'm actually wearing their shirt right now, and I actually wore it during the Derby episode. So oh, nice. again, uh, it was kind of funny that this worked out. Um, Dos Por Cuatro out of Argentina is another uh, phenomenal roller derby league. Letter W. I'm just going to steamroll you like I did in episode three so we can get to your letters. So you've got <laughs> a nice facts. little flashback. I was, was going to say, I thought the Victorian <laughs> team was um, would just roller derby with everyone just had their pinkies out. That's all I kind of saw. Oh, but then you said it was Australia. I'm like, well, they're tough as nails. Oh yeah, no, they're they're a different they're a different breed. I would like God, I just want to go to Australia. Um uh W Wiftida, the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. I gave them a shout out during the episode, but I'll give them another shout out here. They are the governing international body uh for flat track roller derby. Uh and if you check out our roller derby episode, you can find more information on them and the bank track leagues, and you can find a league in your city to get hooked up with. Uh Boom. letter X for crossover. Uh, it's the <laughs> act of crossing yeah. your legs while skating. Uh, yeah. The letter Y. No issues just, there. No issues just... there with X and crossover. No, I mean, no. It's, Go ahead. It makes an X. Your legs make an X. I was there. There was a picture. Mm-hmm. Legs. Oh, no, no. It all makes sense. Yeah. No, it does. It all Why? Adds up. Why? Why would you do this? <laughs> Why would you do this? Um, no, really. Why? Why would you do this? Uh, that's what I'm using for the letter Y. <laughs> Uh, it is a fun, incredible sport to be involved in. Uh, it's known to be dominated um, by females and uh, female presenting individuals, but there are men's leagues out there. And also it's just a, just one of the most open, inviting scenes that I've ever been a part of. I mean, Brandon, you talked about when you got to see the LA Derby Dolls skate mm-hmm. when you were back in LA. I mean, it is a community that everybody can look back on fondly so why would you do this because it's a family and because it's arguably one of the greatest sporting experiences i've experienced in my life z zebra as well also zebra also zebra um also has to not well actually no it really is the zebra it's the umpire the referee um they're referred to as zebras or they're referred to uh ooh ooh Derby community might have to get me on this one. A flamingo. It's in my notes, but I don't remember why I had flamingo in there. I think it's because they stand on one leg. I think that's the non-skating officials. I think the people that actually skate on skates have the striped shirts and they're zebras. And I think the people that don't skate because they stand on one leg are flamingos. I don't know. Somebody hit me up in the comments and tell me I'm wrong. But what I don't have to do anymore is give any more letters because we're done <laughs> with my episode. <laughs> that and was a fun episode. I really enjoyed that. It was nice to be able to see you take the reins of the episode and just kind of run with it. Especially it was cool to see how passionate and into it you were. And I think that probably, hopefully, if anybody who listened got sparked some interest for someone who didn't already have it. Um, it was a very cool thing. And if you ever get a chance it. to go out to a derby uh, event, do it. You might even see the game, but I think there's a lot of things going on around that rink that are super fun um, outside of the actual sport, too. So um, definitely worth your time. So next episode we have was humans, where we talked about things that were unique to the human species. Um, And where did we leave off? Uh, You for urine tooth. Urine tooth. Yes. Got to go back and find out what's up with (laughs) urine tooth. Uh, Your pity fact was... X for not expected. Okay. Which I'll, which I'll so we're going to give it the crossover. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to skip over X. Uh, v for visual emotions. Um, humans are the only animals that blush. We are also believed to be hey. the only animal that feels embarrassment, a complicated emotion requiring understanding others' opinions and other factors. Um, Charles Dar- Darwin called blushing the most peculiar and most human of all expressions, while Mark Twain said, man is the only animal that blushes or needs to. Hmm. Which I always like that quote. Or it needs to. Or it needs implies to. stuff. Yeah, it w. does. <laughs> yeah, it does. W for waiting. The average person will spend six months of their life waiting for a red light to turn green. Ugh. The National Association of City Transportation Officials Ugh. say the average time spent waiting at a red light is 75 seconds. 
which seems short to me. I'm it does. not in Phoenix. That's not, not accurate. No. Which over a lifetime adds up. They say you'll end up accounting for 20% of your life behind the, um, the wheel uh, in your life. And that is um, spent at a red light, which doesn't seem to add up. But um, according to the National Association of City Transportation Officials, take it up with them. Huh. Now, that's a lot of time. 20%. Gee, many Christmas. That's, that's why I don't stop at red lights. It's really no. what it comes down to. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Just right through. Right through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Close the eyes, throw the hands up, make, make it a, make it an experience. X, over we'll, no, we did X already. We did so, X. Why? Yeah. Um, why yawning is a, is biological air conditioning, more yawning facts. Ooh, That's where you're going to get when you're getting to why, <laughs> um, a series of experiments conducted by Andrew C. Gallup, PhD, a postdoctoral research associate at Princeton university suggests the reason, and it's great. Cause he says suggests, I suggest a lot of things, but I don't have letters <laughs> after my name, so it doesn't really matter. The reason for yawning might be that it cools the brain. The stretching of the jaw to yawn increases blood flow in the neck, face, and head. In conjunction with that, the deep intake of breath forces a downward flow um, on the spinal fluid and blood from the brain. The air breathed into the mouth then cools these fluids. So biological air conditioning. You buy it? I had to fight really hard not to yawn during that. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be the only one. People I've, listening at home going, I was yawning when he was talking about birds. <laughs> no, 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 I was thinking about it. Like as I was actively thinking about it and like thinking about the steps of yawning, I'm like, I really need to yawn now. Don't yawn. Don't yawn. Don't yawn. Don't do it. No, Don't do it. We're talking about yawning too much. No, Z. It makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I guess so. Sure. Why not? Why not? Who, who am I to disagree with Andrew C. Gallup, PhD? PhD. He's got a letter do after his name. Name after he's his got letter. letters. Something he's got letters. Yeah. Z for catching some Z's. There you go. That's all right. right. I'll take it all day. You have no sense of smell when you're asleep. When you are sound asleep, your sense of smell shuts down. You can smell after you've woken up, but huh. not while you're asleep. So anytime you've seen like those movies where someone like wakes up and goes, "Is that smoke?" That's just not true. And I guess that's how people end up well, getting into really bad situations with like, you know, house fires and such. Well, the smoke wouldn't have woke them up, but they could wake up and then still smell and go, is that smoke? But it's not necessarily the smoke that would have woken them up. It was the crackling of the timbers that woke yeah, them up. Yeah, exactly. But, but also what I'm hearing is, so when I fart myself awake, <laughs> it's either audible or seismic, but not. I smell an edit coming up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like you've never done it. Oh yeah, no, no shit. <laughs> What's that scene from? Um, uh, 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 how about them apples movie? With Robin Williams and what's his name? Oh, now it's gonna be an edit. I don't oh remember. come on, what's the name of that movie? Um. How about them apples in Boston and Robin Williams? Oh, Patch Adam? No. <laughs> People are so mad right now. They're screaming it at us. Um, the Blind Side? Was it The Blind Side? Oh I don't guys. think so. Yes, with Sandra Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> well, he talks about how um, his wife farted and woke herself up in the middle of the night. And it was one of the, his favorite moments of his oh. wife because... It was one of his her picadillos, and he said, "Actually, those are the things that make us fall in love with the person is because it's their what makes them unique, and it's not necessarily the shiny moments." And uh, that's the truth. I believe that wholeheartedly. So, moving along, next episode, <laughs> food. Where did we leave off, Nathaniel? Uh, food. We left off with the letter X for extreme sales. We got pretty deep in that episode. Uh, we, we did. And actually, you got away with Z being your pity fact. And I didn't write down what Z was. Do you have what Z was? Z was zombie chicken. And I know oh. this one was not. This is the only time we've been flagged on Instagram. Um, they said that oh, the image right. of the zombie chicken um, was uh, too much for most consumers of Instagram and could not. Uh, that one had like a in order to look at it, you had to hit the. I'll, I want to see this content. I, I am over 18 years old. Trust me. Trust me. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. 
Definitely go back to episode food to hear about the zombie chicken or check out our Instagram because it's a, that's, that's, that's one of a kind story. That was good. Um, All right. So the letter Y, you've only got one letter. Why? For you don't say. <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you can take, this is wild. I, I have no, I, no belief that this is true, but apparently it is. We should try it. Um, okay. You can taste garlic with your feet. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, you I know, that's that. true. Yeah. What no, you, mean, you know, that's true. You just doing that on Saturday night. What's up? No, no, it's a, uh, it's an old, um, I don't know if it would be what the uh, hand, I don't know what the term would be. Um, goodwill hunting, by the way. Yeah, I know. I looked it up. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it just hit you, me. Goodwill you, hunting. Damn you, it. You that was really you bad. You realize I could have cut all of that out and saved face for us. And you nope. just made me keep nope. it now. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right. At least we both look like idiots. All right. No, okay. <laughs> as, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I just closed the tab and I was like, no, 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 I wasn't going to let that one die. Shame. Okay. So um, go back to how you're tasting yeah, garlic with your yeah, feet. Garlic. Um, no, it's an old uh, remedy um, to clear up your sinuses. Um, Putting garlic also, in your feet? Uh, yeah. And socks. Um, also, uh, if you put like Vicks Vapor Rub on your feet and then put socks on and go to bed, it'll clear up a sinus. Conge- Don't ask me why, but like, I don't know. It works. Well, according to science, <laughs> it's all thanks to a thing called Allison. It's a chemical response uh, responsible for garlic's unique smell. It can be absorbed through your skin, pass through your bloodstream, and end up in your mouth and nose, huh. making you taste the garlic even though it never went in your mouth. But that's huh. just, you know, science's yeah. take on it. That's just science. I just put it on my feet for the fun of it. Fun. <laughs> fun. <laughs> that's that's why your pasta tastes so good. <laughs> I yeah. Gross. Dude, dude, I eat I ate so much garlic that uh what I made an omelet the one day and then like an hour later I went to go get a massage and the massage therapist like walks in the room. She's like, you smell garlic? And I'm like, I should really <laughs> cut back on my garlic usage. <laughs> there was a restaurant in Playa del Rey where I used to live. It was an Italian restaurant. And they had like, you know, bread and little garlic dip. But it was just chopped garlic in olive oil. And then it was just soaking there. And I didn't realize this, mm. but garlic can be spicy. And I would eat so much of it. And actually, oh. it was like when you eat too many peanuts. You know, you sometimes, you know, or like too many sunflower seeds, you can get like the rawness on the Uh inside of your cheek. Oh, I I love that stuff, but it's dangerous. It's like two days later, you're still suffering. (laughs) Um, All right. Next episode, animals. Uh, Where do we leave off? V for very strong. Oh, yes. That's Uh, right. That's right. And X was your pity fact. And again, I did not write down what it was. That's my favorite title that I ever came up with. It was X for X going to give it to you. Oh, um, that's But it was spelled right. E-X, so implying oh, that's your X. Right. That's right. Yeah, it was very that, good. I felt I, really proud I, of myself. I remember booing that, yeah. Yeah, you probably should have. <laughs> um, W for whales. Uh, whales swallow half a million calories in a single mouthful, or specifically around 457,000 calories. According to a 2011 study in the Journal of Experimental Biology, not the Journal of Biology, Experimental Biology. Um, many whale species take in an oversized mouthful of ocean water and filter out all the krill and other small ocean life um, for consumption using their baleen plates, AKA their teeth. And the, what's crazy is you wouldn't think you'd get that big from doing that, but the biggest whales in the world, the biggest living things on this planet, that's how they get to that size. Did you hear about the, uh, the surfer that ended up inside of a whale's mouth? Was his name Jonah? Uh, no, no. I mean, that would have been hilarious. No, it was like a uh, month, couple months ago. Oh, real um, recent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, no. It was very like I'm. It might be there. Might be video of it. I know there's video of a girl who almost ended up in a in a whale's mouth. But yeah. But fun fact: their their throat is so small that a human cannot fit through their throat. So like, the whale will spit you back out. So Jonah was not eaten by a blue whale is what I'm trying to say, because 
Are you casting any kind of doubt on stories that for from 3,000 years ago? Oh, not at all. I'm just saying that it wasn't a blue whale. Oh, okay. Okay. must have been something different with exactly. a, a larger throat exactly. hole. Okay. Bigger, that makes sense. Yes, that adds exactly. up. <laughs> Why uh, for this? This is a good one. You're, you're really going to appreciate this. Why uh, for... Why? <laughs> <It's>, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to deliver with a straight face. All right. Why is for the letter Y in grizzly. Come on, y'all. It's Y. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> what do you want I, from I'm, me? I'm okay with that. I, I, oh, said, okay. I said that that was, that, at least there's a Y in that word. <laughs> <laughs> a grizzly bear's bite is strong enough to crush a bowling ball. Huh. Yeah. Those that find themselves in the presence of a grizzly bear will surely want to stay out of reach of the animal's super sharp claws, but they'll certainly also want to keep out of the way of the grizzly's mouth because these creatures have a bite force of 8 million pascals. Pascals is a measurement of pressure. Um, if you ever watch Mythbusters, pascals is a word that's used yes. all the time. Um, according to National Geographic, that means grizzly bears can literally crush a bowling ball in their jaws Yikes. Also, it, just a side tip for me, avoid all parts of the bear, oh, not yeah. just the claws or the <laughs> mouth. I, if, if you see its tail, avoid it. Feet, toes, avoid them. Unless it's a black bear, then they're adorable and I kind of want to cuddle They really them. are. People have <laughs> such a crazy perception of black bears and they're just oh. kind of big dogs. Oh my God. They're, they're so derpy. But one thing, so... You, you you gave me two units of measurement for how strong this grizzly is, which I can tell. It's a strong grizzly. But I have no idea what the hell a Pascal is and what to compare it to. And I also have no idea what else can crush a bowling ball. So while I know that's impressive, I'm like, I don't... Does, does my head... Well, this is how you want to look like at it. Is my head similar to a bowling ball? Like, does it take as much power to crush my head as a bowling ball my or head's like, pretty close to a bowling ball but it's not um, the same size is, but is it the same i'd look at it this way okay <laughs> one pascal that's <laughs> not going to hardly do anything to a bowling ball <laughs> however if you have thousand, eight million of those pascals million. oh you're crushing bowling balls all day all day it's a lot of so, pascals. there you go that sums right. it up four million not so much it's going to make some damage this but been, you know this has been physics with do brandon it. Yeah, welcome. Um, Z for, gosh, I, now that we're going back and looking at these, Z for zebra again, but I, zebra stripes. Okay. Zebra stripes actually act as a natural bug repellent. Um, cows may benefit from artificial stripes, but zebras have the real deal. One 2012 report published in the Journal of, again, Experimental Biology, <laughs> suggests that zebras' black and white stripes um, may be an evolutionary feature to fend off harmful horsefly bites. The zebra-striped horse model attracts far fewer horseflies than either um, the homogenous black, brown, gray, or even white equivalents, huh. one researcher wrote. I like, I, I gotta get in on one of these like journal of experimental biology because they're just throwing out ideas seeing what <laughs> sticks biology after dark well you know and the other thing is to do is next time you go camping go in like you know a monochromatic theme right there black and white and see if that attracts fewer you know flying science. neighbors exactly that's it's science basically also i like how you kind of gave yourself crap for that one dude it was animals and the letter z if you hadn't used zebra i would have been wondering what you were doing <laughs> that's true yeah well, where else are you gonna go with z on that one all right, all right. so that concludes animals it, it so does. we're going into our next episode episode seven which is random <laughs> random was not a good one for you no, no, uh, I, I, I did not get very far. But you know what? That probably just speaks to the quality of the facts that came inside of that episode. So go back, check it out. Let us know. Bullshit. Where do we? One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we leave off? Uh, rubber ducks. Ah, R for rubber ducks. R for so, rubber ducks. So, and what was and our um bonus T. pity fact? T. I don't even know what T was. Again. Okay. I don't S. This was this was wild. S roller coasters. Do you know why they were invented? Uh, entertainment. Oh no 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 no! My my friend, that is <laughs> such a, a numbskull idea. Uh, uh, <laughs> why uh, would you think a roller coaster was for entertainment? Simpleton thinking. Simpleton. Gosh, no! It is clearly <laughs> invented to distract Americans 
from sin. Wait, what? Yeah, roller coasters were invented to distract Americans from sin. In the 1880s, hosiery <laughs> businessman Lamarcus Thompson hated that Americans were tempted by hedonistic places like saloons and brothels. So he set out to straighten up one of the most immoral places he could think of, Coney Island, New York. There he built America's what? first roller coasters to give some New Yorkers what? some good, clean fun away from their seedier pastimes. What? And from that day forward, New York was free from sin. <laughs> Dude, that's that's awesome. I had yeah. no oh, yeah. idea. That Old is... Lamarcus Thompson oh, hated Mar temptation. Saloons. Oh, God. <laughs> Only you could see Six Flags now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you go or, to sin. Or, or, or Coney Island. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, oh. is it Coney Island still, I mean, it's it's a place, but I, I mean, mean, it's, I mean, it's not like the boardwalk is not what it used yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's still a thing. Why are you for you don't say? Water <laughs> makes different pouring sounds depending on its temperature. Okay. That kind of messed with me. This is a fun one you want to try at home. If yeah. you listen very closely, hot water and cold water sound slightly different when being poured. The heat changes the thickness or viscosity of the water, which changes the pitch of the sound it makes when being poured. What we feel as oh. heat comes from the, um, the molecules of the water moving faster. Cold water is thicker, therefore makes a huh. slightly higher pitch sound. Adds up. Wait, the thicker water creates the higher pitched sound. According to this, th uh, cold water is thicker and therefore makes a slightly higher pitch sound. Interesting. I wonder why it makes the higher pitch sound. I would have expect molecules moving faster would have had a higher frequency and a higher, higher sound. See, I was kind of, I was kind of blown away at how uninteresting I found this fact to be because in reality, it really should be. I mean, oh, dude, it is I'm the same liquid. Right now. Oh yeah. This this should be very interesting. Like, why is something that common? Yeah, it, it's actually fascinating. But I just I left it going. That does nothing for me. For us, does nothing for me. It's fascinating. Yeah, no, I mean from a science <laughs> aspect, it's a heavy hitter. Oh yeah. Um, like you got to almost stop and ask yourself: Is this so uninteresting that it actually has become, in fact, very interesting? That's what no, I think no. I think here. it was very interesting from the get go. Okay, good. Well, hey, then, then there's no need to debate. Let's just move on to V. V for very hard to believe. How many times can you fold a piece of paper? How many times, Nathaniel? Wait a minute. Didn't we didn't we use this? I feel this does sound familiar. This does sound familiar. Uh, yeah. 14. So 14, because I want to say I guessed seven before. I think you've got a repeat fact in here. We do, but this was not our bonus fact, it so we'll figure oh. it out. Um, oh, no. All right, let's, 14. Let's, let's, let's 14 run through times. it. You can, run, you can run 14. Is that it? No, but it's very close, oh. and I think your, your number was much higher before. But just so we'll, we'll go this. If you okay. fold a piece of paper 42 times, it would be thick enough to reach the moon. Now go watch or listen to episode 7, Random. Because that's going to break down all the interesting things for letter V. Um, all right, then let's move on to W for West Tray to Papa West Tray. The shortest commercial flight in the world is in Scotland. Yes, it's true. Scottish regional airline Laganiere operates the shortest commercial flight in the world between the islands of West Tray and Papa West Tray. A distance of 1.7 miles, which is a scheduled <laughs> flight for 90 seconds. My only thought is, will there be a meal? Uh, one peanut. One peanut. Like oh. seriously, 1.7 miles, shortest scheduled commercial flight, like flight in the world. Huh? 1.7 miles. But I guess a lot of little island hopping, you got to do that yeah. anyway, right? Yeah. I got nothing. X. <laughs> X for Xbox controller. This okay. was kind of, when you think of the reasons oh, no. why they would do this, it's a little oh, dark. No. Oh. The U.S. Navy uses Xbox 360 controllers. Operating periscopes on submarines is no game, but it turns out the Xbox 360's controllers are lighter, 
more intuitive, and overall just easier to use than the com complex helicopter-style control sticks the Navy sailors previously used. Also, the game console controller sells for about $20 each, while replacing a submarine industry standard controller can cost nearly $40,000. And on top of that, swapping the Xbox controller has reduced training time from hours to minutes. The problem is also it's like, let's go get some young kids and allow them to basically control submarines and what's the easiest way to do that well, here's your xbox 360 controller this is this is this really is, a metaphor why, for a lot of things that's wrong in this world <laughs> yeah this is also why anybody that's been anywhere near the military knows when you hear military grade hardware you run the other way <laughs> military grade why awesome, for 360. <laughs> why for you got to be kidding more people drown in the desert than die of thirst. One would assume that dying really? of thirst and dehydration would be the leading cause of death in the desert, but surprisingly, it's drowning. According to the USGS, um, though per pers precipitation in the desert is infrequent, it does rain, mm. it comes on suddenly and very heavily. That's Since safe. deserts don't have water drainage systems in place, the rain falls so fast for the dry clay-like soil to absorb the w rainfall, water o overflows and becomes excessive, which can lead to drowning by sand or just in a flash flood. Happens oh. here in Arizona mm. a lot. Yeah. Ugh. It's unfortunate. Oh, think about that. That is. That was actually, there was a, I, when I was out this morning chasing the storm, I got a flash flood warning on my phone for the area that I was in. It just, and it's crazy because all it has to do is rain 50 miles away from you, but it's in a mountain and it just barrels down that mountain canyon and you have no idea. And suddenly, well, and people think it's like a lazy river until the, that log spears you, you exactly. know, until that branch absolutely just enters your body. It's, it's yeah. no longer a There's, lazy river. Oof, no. Ooh. Z for Zoom. Z According like, to uh, wow. the first person convicted of speeding was going how fast, do you think? Oh, that kind of Zoom. Uh, Zooming. Oh, Lord. Uh, 45 miles an hour. It's got to be. 45 miles be, an hour would be a good guess. For the first person who was ever convicted of speeding I'm, was actually yeah. only going eight miles an hour. <laughs> according to the guinness world records the first person to be charged with speeding was walter arnold of the english village paddock wood kent in kent okay. on january 28th 1896 arnold was spotting going four <laughs> times the speed limit in his 19th century bends but since the speed limit at the time was just two miles per hour that meant he wasn't going too fast by today's standards uh the constable that had to chase him down on his bicycle issuing uh, a ticket and earning arnold the speedy distinction um yeah wow did did you have I think you're the one that gave me the fun jaywalking fact. It may have been back in the humans episode about how jaywalking used to be a thing like it started because just drivers were hitting pedestrians cuz pedestrians were just in the road and they were used to it. <laughs> I don't know if maybe, that was me, but it maybe, sounds like something I would say. That sounds like something you'd say. Now I'm just yeah. imagining just somebody barreling down the road at if you eight got miles an hour. Was an hour, and right, exactly. And, and over, chased down by a bike. Yeah. <laughs> but i think if you got the first like speeding ticket it's fair to ask some questions you're like okay you want me to do what what is this paper you're handing me like if you're the first guy you can be like no no i'm sorry what, what does this piece of paper mean this means nothing you tell me one other person in the world who's ever gotten this piece of paper no i'm sorry go on with your day and that concludes random that's random. All right, moving on to movies. I uh, love this episode. Learning the facts for this episode was a really fun. Was, um, where did we leave off? Uh, last uh, last fact was X for X rated, and uh, Z was your pity fact. So all you have is the letter Y, which I'm guessing um you don't say. No, <laughs> oh, why so much? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> why for, why so much? Um, 
It cost more than $300 million to make the most expensive film according to NerdWallet. The most expensive film ever made as of November 2020 is the 2011 film Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Really? Uh, with a budget of $378.5 million, the number was adjusted to $422 million for inflation. Um, and just to be clear, half of that budget was spent on scarves for Johnny Depp. <laughs> Boo. Just yeah, boo. <laughs> still, it works. Really? Um, what? No, so yeah. No, does this, do you, do you have why it's the most expensive? Why so much? Well, I mean, it's you know special effects. I I, I don't have anything listed out I, here I, like I, a I budget, just, but I, I just feel like Johnny Depp James, was pretty expensive. James Cameron's Avatar was more visually visual effect dependent than. I think you're underestimating the cost of these scarves. <laughs> I, they are. Have you seen these scarves? <laughs> that was a lot of scarves in that movie. A lot that of would scarves. Definitely. Fine. All, All right. right. One more episode to go to give you the missing letters. It is for people. Where did we leave off? Uh, Mr. Willis Courier, which we haven't given any other facts, but I do have to give a shout out to Mr. Willis Courier for developing the air conditioning unit um, as I sit in my air conditioned house right now. Um, Shout out big ups to, to Willie, uh, August in Arizona. Big ups to Willie. <laughs> uh, you did not take any pity facts on people, though. So you owe me X, Y, and Z. X for extremely obvious. Ignaz Swimmel Swimmelweiss. I'm sorry. Yes. What? Ignaz Swimmelweiss. Born 1818, died 1865. He was the physician who came up with the idea of washing your hands before assisting in birth. Because, you know, infections kill moms and babies. Um, he was ridiculed and died in an insane asylum. He was beaten to death by the guards. Only after his death, the existence of germs became generally accepted <laughs> following the work of Luis Pastor and others. Still, there's a big chance many of us are alive now because of our great-great-grandmothers did not die in childbirth thanks to Swimmelweiss. He's a true hero of the modern age and basically forgotten. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird how... Um, yeah, that, that might have uh, some sort of effect on today's I world and some weird way I, I can't tell if i feel better or or, yeah. or or just well there's no hope we've been doing this for hundreds of you years you could look at it this way <laughs> not believing in germs uh currently is having a bit of a renaissance mask. why your hands wash your hands for Pete's sake, wash your hands. Um, why? Why for why don't we know him? John Bardeen, the inventor of the transistor. The transistor is what allows electronics to process ones and zeros, effectively um, marketing, uh, marking the beginning of the digital age. John Bardeen is why I'm able to talk to you remotely. It's why anyone is able to listen to this podcast. It's why Anything you've done today is more than likely possible because of John Bardeen. The beginning of the end. Well, that might be another way of looking at it. <laughs> another way of looking at this next one. Oh, boy. Hang with me here. I got to loosen up the jaw for this name. Z for Zazingla Bizinski. Right. Zazinla Bazinski okay. was a Polish painter, photographer, and sculptor oh, specializing Polish? in the field. You are so off. Oh, I, oh. <laughs> you think? <laughs> you think? Polish? <You're... laughs> Sorry. Continue. <laughs> he was specializing in the field of dyspo dystopian um, surrealism. Born in Sanuk, finished uh, architecture studies in Krakow, and in the 60s, he was working as a designer in a bus company. Um, called AutoSam. He designed innovative buses, mini buses that were very popular at the time. And this time he saw um, many of the um, artist projects of their own. In like 1977, his wife and only son moved to Warsaw. Bazinski was a great painter. Um, his paintings are very disturbed. 
I'm going to spell his name. So if you get a chance to look him up, Z D Z I S L A W Bazinski B E K S I N S K I. If you get a chance and you're in the mood to see some of the weirdest stuff, check out some of his artwork. His son um, went on to be a very popular radio um, 90s radio personality where he had a very like imagine these same paintings, but then translated into a radio broadcast. Ooh. And that was the best I could do for people with Z. That's a great Z. Also, we're going to have that name uh, and a link to the Wikipedia page uh, in our show notes. So whatever you're listening on, uh, we'll make sure because, yeah, I tried writing that down and there's there's a lot of consonants on here that. Yeah, yeah it'll be in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> dude that's it that wraps it up that's it that's it that is we did it the missing letters that's 260 delivered. letters worth of these letters are no longer something. missing they they're are no found. longer missing we found them we gave them a home whether it was deserved or not uh <laughs> whether it was good or not um some of them will apologize too uh, but no this is uh that is 26 letters for 10 Topics, birds, camping, roller derby, humans, food, animals, random movies, people, and countries. Uh, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this before we started this recording, so I'm just going to put you on blast right now. What's your favorite fact, if you had to pick one, out of the 260 that we've done? Mm. What, uh, is, is, there one that, is there one that sticks out to you? Yeah, it actually comes from this episode, People. Um, okay. And I'm not even sure if we delivered it. It may have just been a bonus one. But uh, I found out that Wilford Brimley was Howard Hughes's bodyguard. Did we? I think we may have talked about that at the end. That one just blew my mind that Wilford yeah. Brimley was a That's bodyguard Mr. for Diabetes. Howard Hughes. Um, and that is yeah, no, that, that, that one really, I, I like, but you know what? I love facts. I love just the just weirder, small. the better, the more obscure. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely been fun, uh, you know, going through all of these. So to nail it down to one is almost impossible, oh, but yeah, yeah Wilford yeah. Brimley all day. No, Wilford Brimley, Wilford what, Brimley, personal security. What about you? Uh, I actually, I can take it all the way back to the second, actually, I don't know if it was the second fact cause we never went in alphabetical order. Um, but episode one birds, uh, blue jays aren't blue. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I sure, still, sure. That, that still has stuck with me to this day. Um, it's actually my, <laughs> I still think it's my favorite, my favorite little meme I made for social media was blue jays aren't blue. Wake up. Um, it was <laughs> I, just <laughs> the weirdest part about that fact is like they talk about it very casually. Like if you put a blue jay feather into a Morton pestle and grind yeah. the feather down, because that's As something you do. Is you grind blue jays. How many times <laughs> have I found myself just grinding a blue jay? Like just, like one does. Well, cardinals. If they had said grind a cardinal feather, I'd have been like, you know what? I'm doing that on the regular. It's but blue jays. <laughs> yeah, no, that that actually there were a bunch of there were a bunch of great facts um but i really do think blue jays aren't blue was the biggest one that really just messed with me because it's something i i see almost not on a daily basis but almost a daily basis there are birds in my backyard like just to think about it blows my mind but yeah central and northern arizona got a ton of bluebirds so if you want to hear more bird facts and getting all your information and the details on the blue jays actually not being blue check out our episode one birds all right brandon uh wrapping up season one before we take our break um what are you thankful and grateful for uh, I'm extremely thankful for everyone who tuned into the podcast, downloaded, checked out social media, gave us a like, asked us a question. Um, this has been an awful lot of fun. And what has made it even more fun was being able to interact. We've actually made some friends um, oh, yeah. uh, along the way of people who have just, you know, contributed and, 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 I, I just couldn't be more thankful for everyone who had helped out or just enjoyed uh, the podcast. So thank you very much for that. Super thankful. Thank you. I'm going to just piggyback on that and thank everybody else uh, that has listened to know that uh, people in other countries on other continents that we've never met, never will meet, will never interact with on social media so cool. or anything. People have listened to us. Um, hopefully they've learned something. 
um, hopefully they've laughed. <laughs> um, whether or not they learned anything, ho- we we hope that there was uh, there was entertainment and uh, for something that started as um, I don't know, not not from the darkest of places, but both of us just after the last year sure. coming from just a place of uncertainty, and we now ha- we can now say that we've had listeners on almost every continent. I think Antarctica is the one that's that's missing. Um, that's incredible. It's just, a, it's an awesome blowing. feeling to have. So uh, I know one the other person that we're extremely thankful and grateful yes, for yes, is yes. Mr. Mike DeChico. Yes, yes. You can hear more of his music um, outside of not just the, in this episode, but his amazing catalog of tunes at domesticatedrobot.com. Yes, yes, and Nathaniel, yes. I think I want to mix it up uh, this week. I'm going to, I'm going to lead you into the quote. And then right. you close us right. out with it, all right? All right. I, I to, to be fair, I'm doing this in honor of you and, and your fat. Oh, okay. I appreciate okay. that. All I right. like that. I'm, I'm right. curious. I don't know what's coming. <laughs> um, we leave you now with love and light and this. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, parting is such sweet sorrow. Henry David Thoreau. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No idea why that's what I wanted to end with, but one day I was like, I'm just gonna throw like three quotes and a name together, and that's gonna be the ending quote. <laughs> that really encapsulate this entire podcast I- in terms of accuracy, <laughs> and also hopefully you got a laugh out of it. <laughs>